TV KPM Perfection is unachievable. It is futile to chase after perfection when such thing doesn't even exist. Striving for perfection is a registration for a lifelong disappointment due to the inevitable failures. So, let's all focus on progress rather than perfection, especially when you are striving for a certain goal. During the Recovery Movement Control Order, RMCO, or even when we were in quarantine, we have seen many posts circulating online regarding the things that we should do to fulfill our time wisely. These posts have been telling us to start learning new language, to play an instrument, to bake, to exercise. The list is endless. These posts are usually very, very passive-aggressive, so we feel slightly guilty for not doing the things that they have suggested. For students like myself, we had to adapt to online learning and virtual classes on top of trying to finish that avalanche of homework and assignments to do. So this constant telling of what we should do and also the tasks that we've delayed could feel too overwhelming to bear. On social media, we also have seen people posting their success and achievements online, like how many hours of revision they've done, how many cakes they've baked, how many music they've played. We feel quite incompetent for not achieving as much. For me, personally, I feel apprehensive because I feel like I'm not being good enough. There's this girl on Instagram which I follow who says that she's been studying for at least nine hours a day, a minimum of nine hours a day. Whereas for me, I've only been studying for a maximum of two hours a day, despite having the same 24 hours as her. This feeling of being incompetent, this feeling of not being good enough and not being productive enough isn't really a foreign feeling to many of us during quarantine, right? So, being the good friend that I am, I am here to remind you that you need to give yourself a break. This RMCO, this MCO, the quarantine isn't some productivity contest. You are surviving and fighting a worldwide pandemic. You should give yourself a break. Pressuring yourself to do more and more and more. Each day could result in a burnout, which will then cause you to have a mental breakdown. This constant and repetitive cycle of grinding, which is then followed by crying and breaking down, is unhealthy to your mental health. All of this is caused by perfection. When you strive for perfection, one thing you should know is that you are setting a ridiculously high standard for yourself to follow, which deep down inside you know you will never ever be. When you strive for perfection rather than progress, you are paralysed by this fear of failing, which will then cause you to stay stagnant at the place where you start, which means you are never moving anywhere. Progress, on the other hand, allows you to move forward because even if you're moving at your slowest rate, even if you're moving at your slowest pace, you're still making movement. You're still making progress towards your goal. And this is exactly what we need to be successful. One thing that you have to bear in mind is perfectionism creates procrastination. Shocking, right? When you are striving for perfection, it stalls any progress because you want to achieve something so perfect even in very first attempt. So this causes you to never even try and you will never start because you are terrified of failing on your very first attempt. So how do we become productive during quarantine? How do we stay successful and become the productive person that we want to be without comparing ourselves to the perfection of others? Well. Number one thing you have to do is you have to acknowledge your lack of productivity. You have to know that you're not doing enough. Maybe the only thing that you did today is you've stayed in bed and watched a couple of movies or maybe you've eaten too much good food and you haven't been exercising. Or maybe you've been studying for only 20 minutes a day despite having 24 hours a day to yourself. You have to know that this breaks this constant indulgence of good food is exactly what your body needs and your mental health needs to stay happy. 
So yes, have a break. And then, after acknowledging your lack of productivity, you have to comfort yourself and tell yourself that it's fine to not be doing so much. You deserve that break because you are surviving from a pandemic. And then, you have to push that restart button. Plan your days ahead with tiny little baby steps that will guarantee success. Instead of focusing on trying to have too much or maybe focusing on progress, you should have little baby steps that will allow you to move forward. Focusing on perfection will only stall any form of progress. And then you have to bounce back from it. Planning your days and follow these little steps that you have planned. Maybe your goal is to finish one book this month. You have to read at least two pages a day and then maybe five pages the next day. And then on the third day, you'll only read two pages and it's fine. Because why? You're still making progress. And that is exactly what we need to become successful. Remember, progress is the key to being successful and to be productive. When you strive for perfection, it creates nothing but procrastination. That's it for me today, the master procrastinator. Didik TV KPM. Didik TV KPM. Salutations are made to the honourable judges and members of the floor swimming along with me. Life has a very cruel way of teaching us a lesson. That is through a very intriguing process called experience. Sadly, not all experiences are pleasant. To be honest, most of my experiences that I still remember are melancholic, traumatizing, and terrible. These memories haunt my life up to a point where there were days when I wished I had amnesia. In 2016, I was called to speak in front of 25 students. All of them were 13 year olds and the task was simply just to introduce myself. Those few seconds of me walking to the front of that claustrophobic classroom were petrifying. I knew exactly what I had to say, but I couldn't utter a word. 10 seconds of silence. My legs touched to tremble. My hands got shaky. 20 seconds of silence. My vision got blurred. I started to sweat. It was as if the class was bouncing up and down. 30 seconds of silence. I could feel my eyes getting wet. The tears rolling down my cheeks. I was literally choking out of words. Eventually, I did introduce myself with a little help from my teacher. But at that moment, at that moment, I felt like I was lost in the middle of an ocean with no land in sight. But at that moment, I realized that acceptance is the key to happiness. I accepted, I embraced the fact that I'm quite poor at public speaking. All right, maybe I'm extremely poor at public speaking. So I started to work on it and you know, everything takes time. So did this. In 2018, I got the opportunity to represent my school in a public speaking competition. In that time, I knew this was it. I knew I was going to break a leg. Unfortunately, I ended up breaking myself in the future. I failed shamefully, stammering and pausing. Finally, I finished and walked down the stage. The whole crowd was laughing at me. I literally sculptured my name the wall of shame. I could still hear the painful chatters saying I lack natural talent, saying that I'm no public speaker. At that moment, at that instant, I felt like I was lost in the middle of an ocean with no land in sight. The whole world is against me and yet I'm still swimming, swimming and swimming with shattered fragments of hope, hoping that I'll get there someday somehow. That day I walked back home listening to Fight Song by Rachel Platten. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves in the motion. 
like how a single art can make a heart open. I might only have one match, but I'll make an explosion. That day, I realized how powerful a song could be because that song literally inspired my shadow so. This time, life taught me the most painful lesson, the lesson of failure. The English dictionary defines failure as lack of success. Do you realize how this is all pointing at success as the mainstream of life? No. We should value learning, the struggle, the growth in the process of failure. We are too obsessed about winning that we assume failure is something pathetic and as if it is the end. But I believe that failure has the ability to lure success. Countless failures are doorkeepers to success and every time you walk through one door, the gate gets bigger and the lock gets tighter and it gets more and more difficult because we are being tested for our genuineness, for our authenticity, for our real desire to chase that goal. Abraham Lincoln lost his fiance, had an emotional breakdown and lost nine times the presidential election and only then he became the 16th president of the United States of America. I tried and kept on trying gathering shattered pieces of me to rebuild myself into someone better. I embraced failing, learning and self-enhancing consistently to prove that I am one for a reason. Yes, yes, I am lost in the middle of an ocean with no land in sight. The whole world is against me, yet I'm still swimming, swimming and swimming with shattered fragments of hope. Hoping that I'll get there someday, somehow. But I am and I will keep on swimming. Because the absolute failure is when you fail to try. Now I ask you, are you still swimming through the giant waves? Through failure and pain, growing stronger and stronger day by day, stroke by stroke? Or are you just waiting to drown? Thank you for your time. Perhaps we live in a world where beauty is often undermined. Perhaps we live in a world where beauty is so often sought after and yet ignored when it's right in front of you. Perhaps we live in a world where we so often focus on the ugliness that we forget about its beautiful aspects. A very good day I bid to the honorable judges, my dearest teachers, and my fellow friends. I am Sarah Sophia. As you have probably guessed from my introduction, I stand here today to talk about beauty. First things first, what is the concept of beauty? To some people, beauty can mean a physical attractiveness in certain things. But no, this is a misguided concept of beauty. This is not what beauty is all about. It's a part of it, yes, but not 100%. Beauty can also mean those magnificent views you can see as you look out an airplane window. It can mean the love between two people who accept each other as they are. Beauty can mean the kindness we show to one another. Beauty runs skin deep, and in that sense, every single aspect of this world can be beautiful if we take the time to appreciate it. Now, I will talk about the concept of ugliness. Ugliness opposite of beauty or so they say I was doing some writing the other day and I asked my dad about the concept of art he told me that art and beauty exist in everything even in ugliness naturally I had to do some thinking over it because it's such a contradictive statement beauty and ugliness what come to think of it it might be true if you look at it from the right angle, of course. Sometimes we see flaws in certain things. It can be the leaves that have wilted on a tree or the wrinkles by one's eyes when they smile, but aren't these flaws what make something more beautiful? Take dimples, for example. Some people consider it as a beauty feature, even though technically speaking, it's a muscular defect. But isn't this an example of beauty in flaw? Let me give you an example. 
famous French author Victor Hugo once wrote in his book Les Miserables that the character Grantaire was an ugly person, a drunkard and a cynic who didn't believe in anyone or anything. No one knows why he attended the meetings at the Moussin when all he did was criticise the idea of revolution. Despite his numerous flaws, a lot of people, myself included, still regard him as one of our favourite characters. Why? This is because, despite his flaws, we see beauty in the way he so strongly believes in Enjolras to the point that he was willing to die for a revolution he didn't believe in since he saw the minor chance that the people of Paris would rise. While their revolution did fail, it became a calling card for the future generation, causing us to fight against injustice. There's beauty in how they all died for a common goal, and there's beauty in how the brick managed to unite its readers to fight against injustice. Revolution is ugly, I'll admit that. Bloodshed is ugly. Unity, on the other hand, that's beautiful. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. To me, that's a fascinating proverb. Beauty is relative. What is ugly to some people may be beautiful to others. Some people may look for physical attraction in a relationship, while others look for kindness or intelligence, and it doesn't matter if their significant other is, in a sense, physically unattractive. All of these traits are beautiful in their own way. It's just a matter of whether that beauty is physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. It's the same case as some people preferring red roses to white roses, or others preferring sunny beaches compared to a winter wonderland. Either way, everyone has their own preference when it comes to different things. At the end of the day, these preferences all depend on the individual and don't matter. We should not judge those preferences. Unless, of course, those preferences involve hurting someone else. In which case, we should advise before we condemn. Isn't this a way to make the world a better place? To eliminate judgement? Personally, I believe it cruel to cut someone down for simply being passionate about something. Imagine this. How would you feel if someone suddenly hated you for being passionate about something? <sighs> Talking based on personal experience, it feels awful. Does it really matter if someone prefers a different style of music or a different colour than you? Really, there are much larger things to worry about. We shouldn't let something so trivial divide us. All in all, beauty exists everywhere. Even if you find yourself unattractive, you can actually be the most beautiful person to someone else. As long as you stay kind and hopeful, you are beautiful. Remember that. Appreciate the beauty around you, and you'll find the world to be a much happier place, despite its flaws. Flaws make it real after all. Where's the beauty in artificialness and complete perfection? Reality is full of flaws, and it's beautiful. The world is beautiful. You are beautiful. With that, I thank you. DD TV KPM DD TV KPM A very good day I bid to the honorable judges, teachers, and my fellow friends. Today, I would like to give a speech on society's most elusive puppeteer, and that is influence. Influence is divided into two main categories, internal and external influence, both of which play crucial roles in our lives. First off, internal influence. It includes things like cognitive bias, learning, memory as well as emotions and logic. Sometimes we do things spontaneously, unbeknownst to us that we are actually affected by our emotions. External influence on the other hand is more commonly understood between the two types. It encompasses things like your environment, social judgments and culture to name a few. All around us 
we are exposed to these influences and slowly but surely they change our views on many things. The European Reformation occurred because of Martin Luther's influence. The current fourth industrial revolution has greatly enhanced our lives, especially with artificial intelligence. Without influence though, a lot of these events would have fallen flat and our lives today would be dramatically different. Society has become desensitized to issues that truly concern us because influencers don't speak out about it. Emotions such as prejudice, loading and inferiority are greatly caused by internal influences that have been cultivated within us. We still fall for the words of scammers on the internet and people with mental illnesses are still being ostracized and neglected not because we do not care we just choose to not be bothered by it influence has affected our society so much to a point that we are being controlled silently like puppets on strings we act by what has influenced us and too often it is negative. Despite this, there is still a beauty in influence. It is the media's and the government's influence over the people that help power our country through the COVID-19 pandemic. Janet Payeng, a sole Indian man, planted over 550 hectares of trees all by himself changing India's outlooks on their conservation methods and proving that all it took was one man to influence so many. During the lockdown, I watched a live stream hosted by YouTube called The Dear Class of 2020. Amongst its speakers were famous people like Michelle Obama, Beyonce, Malala Yousafzai and even BTS. But what astounded me was that even if they spoke in different languages, they shared a similar message. A message to be who you are and to never let anyone influence you without your consent. I listened to their speeches and thought to myself, this is something I want to be influenced by. Ladies and gentlemen, Someone's actions drive someone else into pain. Someone's split second becomes someone else's everlasting memory. It would be impossible for me to tell you to live a life without influences, but I believe there is a way to reduce its negativity on our lives. When you realize the bad influences, you become a tad bit wiser. And when you realize the good ones, you also learn who to appreciate, respect, and love. My goal today was not to condemn or praise this hidden puppeteer, but merely to remind you of its existence. How many more relationships, opportunities, and ambitions have to go to waste just because of someone else's manipulation? I hope that my speech today has in some way influenced you to be more alert so that society can eventually be more aware of the influences around us. With this, we are a step closer to an era where influence is no longer society's puppeteer. With that, I thank you. Didik TV KPM